Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Hi hey everyone, David Aragona here, taking a look at one of two stakes races on Saturday at Aqueduct. It is race eight, the Franklin Square Stakes for New York bred two-year-old fillies going six and a half furlongs. Actually, the second attempt to run the Franklin Square because this race was scheduled to be run last Saturday. Unfortunately, they had to cancel that card at Aqueduct due to very cold temperatures in the New York area. So we'll make another attempt to run this race this week. Hopefully the temperatures are a little bit warmer on Saturday. The same nine horses that were entered last week are entered again in this Saturday. Saturday's edition of the Franklin Square with one additional entrant. So a field of 10 signed on. Let's show the field for this race. And it's a pretty wide open affair as it was last week. Got a lot of horses coming off maiden wins that could take some money. Many horses that are stepping up in class that are lightly raced uh, that do have upside. A couple of horses that have prior stakes experience drawn to the outside, like She's a Wild Joker and Captain's Daughter. We'll get to them in just a little bit. But let's talk about how this field is going to sort themselves out from a pace standpoint, because a lot of those horses coming out of maiden races do have early speed and as you can see in the time form us pace projector Fast pace predicted that red flag showing up. The number four, a long shot in this race, thin legs is shown on the early lead. The number six, Lilu, who I did peg as the morning line favorite at seven to two odds. She is shown on the outside of that one in second. She showed speed in her maiden victory last time, but plenty of other horses want to be forwardly placed like the number one, Sandy's Garden, the number three, thinking it over, and some speed from the outside as well. So these fillies that broke their maidens in forwardly placed positions in their prior starts could have to deal with a faster pace as they step up to face winners in this Franklin Square. Before we get to those recent maiden winners, let's talk about some of the horses coming out of a stakes race, and that is the key scent stakes. Let's take a look at the replay of that one. It was won by Classy uh, Classy Edition, uh, who is not back in this race. I know Todd Pletcher was not satisfied with the way that Classy Edition was training out of this victory in the key sense, so she's not back in this field, but the second and third place finishers from this key sense are in the race. Captain's Daughter, who's closing in the pink silks on the outside to eventually get up for second, and she's a wild joker who will finish third in this race i thought they both ran fine here they were obviously no match for the winner captain's daughter she is just a reliable closer who tends to pick up the pieces at the end of her races you can see based on our time form uspps here she's gotten some fast paces to close into in her last couple of races uh, but the speed figures they're not really at the level that some of the horses coming out of maiden races have achieved so she doesn't have the upside that some others do making her 10th career start in this franklin square and she also while she's gotten fast paces in her prior races, she's going to get one here. We'll see if she can improve. I think that she's the kind of horse that could pick up another minor award, maybe round out a trifecta or superfecta, but I wasn't really viewing her as a win candidate. And the same goes for She's a Wild Joker, who wants to be poorly placed. But I think we've already seen the best of these runners and some others come into this race with some more upside. Let's get into those recent maiden winners, and we'll start the conversation among those with Lilu, number six, who I did peg as the seven to two morning line favorite. Let's check out her replay when she broke her maiden on December 11th at Aqueduct. This was a pretty good effort in the slop. Now, it was over a wet track. She's likely going to face a fast track on Saturday at Aqueduct, so we'll see if she can transfer this form to some dry going, but this was a pretty visually oppressive win. You could see she's just powering away from this field through the stretch. This daughter of practical joke just is kind of big and imposing. She really uh, just dominated this race as she runs away to win by nearly eight lengths by the time they cross the wire. She goes out for a low profile barn, David Duggan. Maybe some people might not be familiar with that name, but he knows what to do with a good horse. And she earned a respectable 93 time form to a speed figure last time out. That's one of the highest numbers that anybody in this field has earned. So if she runs back to that figure here she's gonna be pretty tough to beat we'll just see if she can deal with what is likely to be a pretty honest to fast pace on the front end at least she is drawn outside some of those other speed rivals another horse that could take some money that's coming off a maiden victory is moam who i pegged as the morning line second choice at four to one let's take a look at her maiden victory all the way back from saratoga in late august that is her coming into the stretch on the rail she's going to try to sneak up inside of these two leaders as they come through the stretch here to the final quarter mile. I thought Moam had some things working in her favor this day. The early pace was pretty quick. Those two leaders kind of 
duked it out on the front end, tired themselves out, and Moam was able to pick up the pieces coming up the inside. This was a day at Saratoga where it seemed like closers had a bit of an advantage. As we look at the time form, just PPs for that race, you see on the left-hand side of the screen that race rating box color-coded in dark blue that indicates that that's a day at Saratoga where closers did do well, better than average in most of the races. So I think that was working in Moam's favor. And furthermore, the time form was speed for that race just a 78. That's about 15 points off the number that Lilu got in the race that we just looked at. So I do think Moam has to improve off that race. She certainly can take a step forward. We haven't seen her in about uh, four and a half months now. So there is room for improvement with this horse. It's just Horacio DePaz, her trainer, doesn't have the best numbers coming off the layoffs. And I really think that she's going to have to take a big step forward, though she might get another fast pace to close into. So that could work in her favor. Another horse that might want some pace and could get it is Sterling Silver. And she's another recent debut winner. Let's take a look at her maiden victory from late November at Aqueduct. I liked everything about this performance. That's her coming into the stretch on the outside with that white stripe. Uh, she uh, sat off the pace, came wide for the stretch run, and just gradually wears down those runners to her inside. It's not like she, you know slams the door on this field late. I mean, she has to work for this victory, uh, kind of grind it out. But the two horses who were inside, they had plenty of prior experience. They're okay. And as a debut runner, I thought that she did pretty well to forge past in the late stages. She's another one that didn't run the fastest speed figure in her debut, kind of like Moam just got a number in the high 70s for that race. But unlike that horse, she's not coming back off a layoff. She ran relatively recently within the past two months. And also, she didn't take any money in that debut. She went off at 17 to 1 for a trainer Tom Albertrani who's not really known for having his first time starters cranked up to deliver their best efforts on debut so I do think that she's one that has upside and could take a step forward off that first effort even though she won first time out she's one that probably did not put her best foot forward in that debut performance one more horse that won her debut that I do think merits strong consideration is the number three horse, Thinking It Over. And let's take a look at her maiden victory when she won in the middle of November on November 12th. That is her coming into the stretch three wide about to take this race over. This was an off-the-turf race that was run over a muddy track, so she's going to have to prove that she can handle horses that are entered for dirt on a fast track on Saturday. But she was an MTO in this race, and this was an off-the-turf race that did have a few live MTO ent entrance. Actually, the top three finishers in this race all were entered main track only. So in some senses, as an as a uh, off-the-turf race, it was a pretty legitimate dirt race. And the speed figure speaks to that. She got an 85 time formula speed figure. That's higher than some of the other debut uh, winners coming out of uh, their first starts into this race. And also she's going out for a trainer, Ray Handel, who's really been on a strong run ever since they began this current aqueduct meet mid-December. His horses have really been running. Uh, last week, she was drawn all the way on the outside of post nine when they first drew this race on the redraw for this Saturday, the rescheduled Franklin Square. She's drawn more towards the inside. I wouldn't say that's necessarily a positive for a horse that wants to show speed, but at least she did show the ability to pass horses first time out. And she is a horse that did take a lot of money first time out, going getting bet down to two to one in that race. And that's because she had shown a lot in her morning workouts coming into that race. She's really trained well into that race and out of that race. So I do think that there's further upside for thinking it over in this Franklin Square. I'll throw out my picks for this race. I'm going to stick with that same horse that I picked last week on top, the number three, thinking it over. I've got her pegged at nine to two on the morning line. I think that would be a fair price. She seems like a horse that should take some money in this race, but given that they all have pretty similar speed figures and, you know, a lot to prove coming into this race, I would imagine the money is going to be pretty spread around. So I like thinking it over, even though she's drawn more inside this time. I do think she can work out the right kind of stocking trip. I've got the number two, another debut winner, Sterling Silver in second, and the number six, Lilo in third. I do think Lilo in some ways is the horse to beat, but she's going to have to prove that she can handle the dry surface on Saturday at Aqueduct. Thanks for listening to this uh, analysis of the Franklin Square. Hopefully we get to run it this week. Just uh, the weather has to cooperate. Good luck with your playing this weekend.